All right, everybody, this is Ross. I thought in today's video we would talk about feeding our fruit trees. All of the fruiting plants here that I grow on the property, whether that's the apples, the pears, the stone fruits, the currants, the gooseberries, the yosta berries, the persimmons, the honey berries, another pair of quince, the pawpaws, the gumi here on my right, another young persimmon, whatever it is that you guys are growing, I think the principles relatively are the same, especially if you're growing them in the ground, because in the ground, we're really mimicking nature, right? In a container, we're, we're deviating in a sense from nature. You know, most things are not really meant to be grown in containers. So when we're growing them here in a more natural way here, we want to think about what in nature performs the best and, and really doesn't need our care or any human intervention whatsoever, is that if all the humans on Earth became extinct, what would survive and what would thrive are the forests. We don't need a forest. We don't need humans to control or water all the trees in the forest. We don't need humans to go around and feed all the forests, all the plants in the forest. The forest feeds itself. And the forest pretty much also, because of the way the the leaves and the branches and the trunks and the, the forest falls, hits the ground, well, it covers itself. And I think I'm really starting to understand this a lot more firsthand, at least this philosophy that people have, especially in permaculture. And, um, you know, it's a philosophy that I've certainly agreed with, with, with for a number of years, but for the, the longest time now, I don't think I totally understood the connection between the microbes, the fungus in the, back, in the soil, the bacteria in the soil, all the different microbes in the soil. Of course, the living things also, the small insects or small worms and things like that, that are also in the soil and how this all works together. But also I think what's really made it to me make sense is my connection now to the microbes myself in not only the food that I eat, I think about the microbes. I also think about microbes in my hands or your dog. Every time your dog licks you in the face. <laughs> um, but it's been an interesting health journey that I've been on, as many of you guys know, over the many, the last couple of years. We've talked a lot about functional medicine and stopping, uh, you know, stop eating gluten and dairy. I've recently been seeing a, a chiropractor for the last six to nine months and uh, these have made really big changes in my health and you know if you could do anything for your fruit tree as we all probably would <laughs> you know your baby your prized possession here you put a lot of time you love the fruit you respect all the things that nature does for us you put the time in to feed these things well it makes only a lot of sense that you would do the same thing for yourself and if you knew what really I think is helping these fruit trees the most and helping the soil the most, because it's really about feeding the soil. We're not really feeding the trees. It all works together to help the trees and the bushes and the vines and the shrubs and all that crap. But really, I think if we do the same thing within ourselves, and that starts with what I've been doing a lot recently is actually I've been making my own kefir. And uh, my friend Bill probably will be very proud to uh, uh, hear me say this because uh, he was the one who gave me his kefir culture that's been in his family for many years. So shout out to Bill. Um, I also started out making my own yogurt. And I realized the yogurt's a bit, bit more finicky and uh, even the kefir can be a little bit finicky depending on the temperatures you have, but regardless, you know, not going down that crazy rabbit hole too much, is that the amazing microbes that are in the kefir, in the yogurt, that you ingest then in your body, uh, makes such amazing changes to your health. Um, and I can feel that. I don't need a scientist or uh, a particular scientific study to prove that to me. I know how I feel. And maybe it won't be the same results for every single person. I'm sure it won't. But the nice thing about kefir and yogurt is that you can actually add all the different probiotics that you buy at the store, add it to the yogurt or the kefir, it multiplies in such a high quantity 
from, let's say, millions or billions to maybe even trillions of bacteria in the kefir culture. And, you know, there's a whole other thing we can go down with that, but you're essentially, you can add any probiotic you want. So if, let's say, there's a probiotic that's supposed to really support your mood, or if there's different strains of probiotics that, like, uh, you know, B. infantis, which is the one that really is supposed to help babies set their entire microbiome up uh, and create that framework for your microbiome that's passed on from the mother to the child, you can actually add that. I actually purchased it, <laughs> B. infantis, and added that to my kefir. I also have added other things for, you know, different strains of probiotics that are really supposed to help with glucose control or weight management or supposed to support your gut-brain axis and support your mood. Um, others are really supposed to help you with your digestion. So I've been adding these over time very slowly and adding different probiotics to this and it's amazing every time it gets more and more further along every week that goes by every day that I drink it it seems like I'm becoming a slightly better version in terms of my health and it's become blatantly aware that well if we operate the same way or as plants benefit from having that diversity of, of microbes in their soil well, why wouldn't we benefit in the same way Everything is connected, guys. You think we're really all that different from this tree? You think I'm really all that different? Um, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it's a crazy statement. But you know what? I don't think we're really all that different. I mean, we came from these things, right? Think about it. We actually have supposed to have evolved from mushrooms. And from mushrooms came animals and came plants. Uh, so, in a sense, you know, th this really shouldn't be biologically all that different. It's not like this is from Mars and I'm from Earth, you know. Like, we're all from the same planet. We all evolved with the same microbes for the most part. Uh, actually, it's probably not 100% true. I'm not a doctor, guys. But the point is, is that, I keep going back to this point, is that I just think that, of course, this, this all makes sense. This all is related. So if I want to do the same thing, I'm thinking to myself, if I want to do the same thing for my tree that I am now doing for myself, and that I go to the store, <laughs> or I don't really go into the store, I'm ordering this stuff online, well-researched probiotics, excuse the truck that just went by, but these well-researched probiotics that are supposed to do X, Y, and Z and have different strains of X, Y, and Z, I'm getting them, I'm putting them in the, in the kefir, and they're making a difference potentially on my health. Maybe they're not. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. But if I want to do the same exact thing for my trees and my plants, well, I've already been doing it for years. And there's even a more specific way I think we can do this in that not only are we trying to add mulch, as you see here, as there's so many different just species of trees, there's leaves, there's sticks, there's branches, there's straw, there is uh, grass clippings, there is different ornamental grasses that I've also cut back, there are different plants that I have grew in the garden. I mean, this over here is our, our asparagus uh, canes, the ferns on the top of the asparagus that I cut back and add to this. We also have branches from the, this big black cherry tree here in front of me. So all of this put to the ground and all the different diversity is I think what's really creating a greater diversity of also of microbes, of bacteria, fungus, all that good stuff for these trees. So it's not just us as humans that need that diversity in our microbiomes, but it's also the same thing with these trees. Now, the point is, once you realize that these microbes the fungus, the bacteria, the mycorrhizae, all this is working together with the trees to provide the nutrients. They're not, they're not the actual nutrients, right? The nutrients are in the soil, but all that life in the soil helps get the nutrients to these trees, to these bushes, to these shrubs, the vines. So that's my point, is that 
again, I think we could put all the multivitamins, and I, I truly believe this, we could put all the multivitamins in our body that we want, but if we don't have the microbes to actually absorb those nutrients, help absorb those nutrients, we're just wasting those nutrients. We're wasting that multivitamin. So it's the same thing. I could apply lime, I could apply gypsum, I could apply uh, azomite, rock dust, I could apply green sand, I could apply so many different nutrients to the soil here. But if I don't have that microbe living ecosystem in my soil, it's not gonna matter. So that's my lesson. Of course, we've been saying for years, chop and drop throw this stuff on the ground. But I think even more interestingly enough now is the diversity. We wanna have the diversity here on top of the soil. This all breaks down, it forms compost. It's obvious you don't need to be a scientist because the soil before I started wasn't black. It was all heavy clay. And over the years now of adding so many leaves and sticks and twigs and grass clippings and this and that. I mean, look, look at the difference in color. Back in there, it's gray or brown. That's more along the lines of what my clay, it's obvious, actually, it's a bit darker now at this point. But look at what the soil has become, this dark humus. And this is everywhere around here. Anywhere I've put this, this mulch, this material down, this organic material, it has turned into that. And it, you know, again, I think that's just essentially what we're doing, feeding the trees. This is really just that simple. There's not much else to it than that. Now, where do you get this stuff? Well, you get it from plants. Plants feed plants, trees feed trees. Other green materials feed other green materials if that makes any sense. So a lot of the trees, like a fungally dominated soil, so the more wood and wood chips and branches that we have, the better. The less woody trees that we have, or less woody plants that we have, excuse me, they like to have a more bacteria-rich soil. So maybe things like comfrey, and chop and dropping all this comfrey, or chop and dropping a lot of this ornamental grasses that you see over here, goes a long way. Uh, for those particular plants. So I think it's, it's interesting. I, I've been really thinking a lot about this and how this all relates, of course, to my own health, not just these, these plants at the end of the day. I mean, it's, and, and also me just touching the soil and, and eating the food that comes off of these trees or these bushes, it has microbes on them which then go into my own body. So there's a huge amount of benefit here. You know, they say that, what was that study that uh, if you put your hand in the soil, there's a lot of um, changes that happen to your mood and they probably they did some sort of testing with depression and happiness and things like that. And it's supposed to really affect your happiness. So uh, it's it all makes sense to me, you know? So that's how I'm gonna live my life, that's how I'm recommending it to you guys that you guys take some of these similar approaches um, and we'll all be a lot better off. So thanks guys for watching. We'll see you soon. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys for the next one. Take care.